You know, I would love for this video to be obsolete days or even the minute that it goes up. I have a special place in my heart for all the games on this list, and I hope they come back someday in one form or another. But so far, it looks like it could be G-A-M-E for some of these JRPGs. So here we are with five JRPG series that are dead. Probably. Valkyria Chronicles Valkyria Chronicles is a series that I absolutely love. The latest fourth entry was a great game, and while I think it took some steps back from its previous entries, it did a great job showcasing what makes the series great. And a great many others think the same as well. However, it doesn't look too bright when a discussion comes up of if we will ever see another entry in this series. Valkyria Chronicles 1 released on PS3 and to mostly positive feedback, however, it was a niche following, labeled as a cult classic. It didn't sell all that well, and it's primarily why the second game was released on PSP. As a result, the fans did not take too kindly to this migration, stating that one of the things people loved about Valkyria Chronicles was its unique look, and that was being lost on the PSP. Among other things, Valkyria Chronicles 2 was panned because of the school academy setting, and people were a little bit tired of that sort of theme. You know how every anime nowadays might be an isekai and people are growing tired of that concept? I mean, I like a good isekai story, but you know, back then the school life setting was the saturated genre for a lot of games and anime. Valkyria Chronicles 2 didn't turn a huge profit and that probably was because of the rampant piracy on the PSP at the time. Nevertheless, the future seemed bleak for the series even back then, but by some miracle, we got Valkyria Chronicles 3 released. In my opinion, this is the best game in the series, while Valkyria Chronicles 1 is my personal favorite. Valkyria 3 never made it outside of Japan, but was mostly met with positive feedback when it released. Thanks to a fan translation, I was able to play the game and I absolutely loved it. And again, back then it seemed like that was was the end of the series. But years later, we got Valkyria Chronicles 4 wanting to harken back to what made the first game so great. And it was great and received positive feedback, but not much in the way of sales yet again. And that kind of leads me into what do we consider good sales numbers for a JRPG? Not everyone that comes out is going to be like a hit, like Final Fantasy, Persona, or Tales of. So I'll pose that question to you guys. What do you think a niche JRPG should sell to not be considered a bomb? Or what do you think publishers and developers expect from these games to do from a sales standpoint? Might be a topic or video for another day. Since the release of Valkyria Chronicles 4, the series has been quiet and Sega has yet to mention if a new game is going to be released. Oh, and I forgot to mention Valkyria Revolution, but um, we don't talk about that trash ass, garbage ass, dumpster fire of a game. God Eater. You know, God Eater, while not one of my favorite JRPG franchises out there, I do like to play them and it's always nice when a new entry pops up. Having three entries in the series, I did not expect God Eater 3 at all when it was released in 2018, but was very excited when it did. God Eater started out on the PSP and was very much a portable format game, meaning its missions and story was centering around getting things done relatively quickly and getting back to the game's main base, as it was designed for pick up and play, also for co-op to play with friends. As a result, I find the series to be kind of repetitive. It's pretty much story mission, go kill these enemies and then come back for some more story. You could do some customization with your weapons and make different types of bullets for your guns, but that's as far as it goes when it comes to extracurricular activities you can do. Don't know if I can really hold it that much against the games as that's what they're designed to do, but I will say the origami themselves do provide enough value to kind of overlook that. There are so many different types and you'll have to figure out what weapon and ammo is best to bring along with you on the mission. Also, there might be more than one large origami, so you have to pay attention to which one you want to deal with easily with the right loadout and maybe fill a slot with a party member whose weapon is effective against the other origami. God Eater was always met with favorable reviews and people that play it pretty much like it. It just goes under the radar when it releases, and probably the sales aren't that strong. I remember Bandai Namco pushing these games, or the franchise rather, remember the God Eater anime? I I thought it was pretty decent and it even had the famous well-known studio of Ufotable behind it. You know, the ones that house Demon Sayer in the fake Goat Knight anime. I'd say our chances of us getting another God Eater is pretty low. Which is the same too, because we will never see female designs like this one again. <laughs> I mean, look at this girl. She's like, she's got the same amount of skin showing that she would have if she wore a swimsuit. You know, I don't, I don't really care about mine, but I'm just pointing it out. And you, you guys know why we ain't never gonna see these kind of designs again. Or maybe we do see them in other games, but as far as like, you know, 
console games go, we we not gonna see as much, especially if it's on PlayStation. Scarlet Nexus. Okay, I'll admit, Scarlet Nexus is not a franchise, and it's the only game on this list that doesn't have more than one entry, but I wanted to talk about it, and I kind of feel like seeing another entry for this game is a long shot, but like I said in the beginning, I would love it if this video becomes obsolete the moment it goes up. Scarlet Nexus was a new IP that I was rather excited about when it was announced, at the time being one of the best looking JRPGs I have ever seen. Seriously, running this game on a 4K monitor at high settings is a treat for the eyes. With this one, you've got some great action art. RPG combat, a style that stands out with its beautiful cell shaded look, a cast of colorful characters that all had good personalities, and while you could only play as one character, I always felt that you had a party with you and the supporting characters with their support skills always made it feel like I wasn't going through the game alone. You hear that Final Fantasy 16? Anyway, Scarlet Nexus wasn't without its faults. By the time I got to the end of it, I felt the gameplay formula was a little bit repetitive and the story got a little bit out there. Going to the moon, time travel, and a bunch of other stuff that made the story feel a little bit too convoluted and just unmanageable at times. One of the things I also saw Scarlet Nexus getting flack for was its comparison to Persona in which you spend time with your teammates to further their bond which I personally didn't have a problem with. Listen, what is with some of you in thinking that a game copying another game's feature or concept is just automatically a bad thing? If it's not done wrong, I don't see a real problem with it. Either way, Scarlet Nexus is, I feel, a sequel or another entry will improve upon some of the game's weaknesses to make it a great entry. It did okay sales-wise, and in about a year after it released, it sold 1 million copies and reached 2 million players. So I guess the numbers are good. I feel a new IP reaching a million sales in the year is pretty good, especially when that IP is a JRPG. Dot Hack. You know, thinking about it, this is one of those series that I feel is not dead per se. It's more like it's concluded, and I'm not necessarily talking about the story. It had a great one on the PS2 between the two series, Dot Hack and Dot Hack GU, and some other games, but I feel like sometimes a series can come out, be a part of that generation of games, and it's okay if it doesn't get anything else. It lived, it was here, people like myself enjoyed it at the time, and sometimes it's just best to close the book on the series. Then about a decade later, Dot Hat Last Recode comes out, a remaster of the Dot Hat GU games, and added an extra story. It threw everything into question. And again, not story-wise, but more like, was Bandai Neko testing the wars to see if there was interest in Dot Hack? Was it because the series was reaching its 15th anniversary? It could be. Either way, I was excited to see Last Recode drop in 2017. I firmly believe that the series was over and done with, even though there was some unanswered questions after Dot Hack GU Volume 3. I was okay with leaving the series in the past, and I enjoyed the Dot Hat GU games when they were only on PS2. I remember liking Haseo's design, the story was just fine, and by the way, Dot Hack did the whole stuck in the game world first, don't let Sword Art Online tell you something different, but I do remember the combat being a little bit button mashing. But after the release of Last Rico, I was kinda expecting another Dot Hack series to be announced or to start, or maybe a remaster of the original four Dot Hack games, but that hasn't happened as of yet. And the chances of that actually happening, I mean, your guess is as good as mine. Golden Sun. Golden Sun is a weird one for me on this list because I don't feel like the series is dead even though its last entry was more than like a decade ago. I feel like Nintendo is just buying their time. Like when the moment is right, they're going to pull the trigger on making a new Golden Sun game. I feel like it's inevitable that one Nintendo Direct there will be a remaster or a new entry or a remake announced and the world will rejoice and have their crazy I can't believe it's not butter reactions and I'm not excluded from that. And of course, one day they'll release one or two games on the Nintendo eShop or something. Oh wait, they just did that? Oh, so this series shows Sound of Life. Huh, so should I keep going? Should I find another game for this slot? Uh, actually, let's see how many people just skip through the video and don't even notice I have this part in there. It'll be entertaining to see down in the comments. I remember playing the second game, The Lost Age on my Game Boy Advance, but it was so, so long ago, I, I'm probably showing my age here, but I remember not doing so well in school and I was grounded for a month and the only system I had to play was my GBA and I got Golden Sun the day before my report card came in the mail. And that was the only game I had to play for an entire month. I remember it being pretty good and I would love to play it again should it receive a remaster or another entry to the series. 
So has this list indeed become obsolete the moment it went up? Let me know, or maybe it's in the future months from now and something was announced. I would love to hear all about it.